friends, mine enemies, people of Earth in general, and animals. Richard from Forsyth here. I have uh, Coconut with me helping tonight, so I think this will be a Coconut-heavy episode. But more importantly, I have a very cool guitar cab that I was really excited to find locally. It's a 4x10, not a 4x12. It's actually fairly compact, which is cool. But here's what's really cool about it. <laughs> There's coconut. It is a half closed, half open cab. So the top two tins are in their own chamber, and the top or the bottom two tins are in their own chamber. And coconut's gonna get in there and find out all about that for me. And uh, as you see, it's unloaded. So I got some pretty neat things to uh, load it with. Let me show you that. I have four warehouse guitar veteran tins that are going to load this thing up after tons of internet research and figuring out what would be best for me tone wise for what I was looking for this seemed to be the best amalgamation of both price and performance so I believe each speaker is a 40 watt peak speaker so that's going to be 80 watts altogether. 160 watt peak something like that. They may be 40 watt speakers. I'm not sure but um, After reading reviews of the tone They're kind of more what I'm going for um, I have a lot of heavy metal cabs big old heavy speakers loud vintage 30s uh, PV 1230s things like that um, I wanted something different and you're gonna see that these speakers have smaller magnets and probably be good for doing more classic rock or like I hope to do my garage rock album is one of the main reasons I wanted to put this little cab together but also really nice jangly clean tones and things like that so let me bust out one of these speakers and let's take a look all right this is our warehouse guitar speaker it is 16 ohm 20 watts um, I believe the paperwork says 40 watt peak sorry coconut is super excited he's helping me out they come packed well, they even have a nice little ring that helps protect the magnet. And you can tell that they're, they're these were the ones that the 12 inch version were meant, I think, to compete with the Vintage 30s. But from what I understand, these are more supposed to be like cream backs, but in a 10 inch version. So they got the cork surround, um, just nice, well put together speakers assembled in America that's got to count for something right so I went with 16 ohm that way I can run my cab at 16 ohm and um, most of my amps are good with that and if I were to run another cab like I have a 210 cab that's 16 ohm that would be cool too so I could I could have all those together so I guess let's take the back of this cab off so we can explore this a little bit and we can start putting these guys in there. Actually, first I'm going to test all of these with my multimeter just to make sure nothing went wrong in shipping and that they're all they're all good and they're all running like they should be. Okay, so we're around about 13. That's not bad. Seldom do speakers actually perfectly hit the ohm rating they're given. They're usually right around there, so right around there is fine. So I probably could have mentioned earlier that this was a Laney cab. Made in the UK, from what I understand. Um, plywood construction on the cab and baffle, and this little back is pressed wood. So it looks like the gentleman who said he left all the wires in here did leave the wires from the first jack, but not the ones that travel in between and to the other speakers. So I am going to have to figure out uh, what I have in stock and get a wiring scheme going on here. So let me go do that. But you can see this is a sealed cab in the bottom, unsealed on the top. I think that's really cool. You're essentially getting uh, two different cabs for the price of one if you're micing this up so that way you'd have a little more tonal flexibility but yeah let me uh get my little scheme together and we're going to do some wiring okay so a lot of people 
get weirded out when it comes to wiring multiple speakers. And it all comes down to managing the ohm rating. So each one of our speakers is 16 ohm. Okay. And what we want to end up with is a 16 ohm load. That's what we want to do. So the first thing we have to do is you just imagine, like I said, we have a, we're basically running two cabs, right? We have a closed and an open. But even if it wasn't, if this was just an open 4x12 or a closed 4x12, it's all the same, or 4x10 either. Same thing. Imagine that these are two separate entities. You have your top two and your bottom two. And what we're going to want to do is run our positive. This is our, this is our jack, okay? So this is going to be our, our positive and our ground. Eh, whatever you want to say. But anyway, so we're going to run our positive to our positive of our first speaker. Okay. And then the negative from this speaker goes to the positive of the next one. And the negative from that is going to go all the way back to our negative right there. And what we have created here is a 32 ohm load in series. And why would I want to do that? Okay, now remember our speakers, just because the way I have them turned here, are upside down, but they're all, they're all the same side, so the positive is just over here now. We want to run our positive from our positive again, from our jack to our first speaker. And it, it actually could have been that one. That would have been fine. I don't know why I went all the way over here. And then we want to run from our negative to the positive of that speaker there. And then from a negative there all the way back there. And this creates another 32 ohm series load. But since we have them both connected off of the same jack that means we are running a 16 ohm parallel load of these two so if you imagine when you create the 16 ohm load this becomes as if it's one speaker same here so you have two 32 ohm speakers that are then by running in parallel split into a 16 ohm load so that you now have the 16 ohms you want to run off your amp it's way simpler than it seems and if all else fails just check your multimeter as you go you guys know that i like to enable on this channel i want everybody to know that you can do this stuff yourself so hopefully you know freeze frame it or whatever you need to do but Hopefully this helps. These are This is obviously the back of my speakers. So we're going to go ahead and get this all hooked up and I'll show you uh, what that comes out to. Okay, so what I've done so far is hooked up my uh, jack to the bottom set of speakers. So I have my positive going over to my speaker over here in the positive. The negative from that speaker going into the positive of this one and the negative of this one coming back out to my jack. Now you can also, we could have easily split the top two speakers off of these. I'm just not doing it that way in case I want to change some wiring schemes later. But what we should read now, if we read off the jack, is around 32 ohms. It'll be less because these things are less. So yeah, right around 25. Again, not too bad. We're probably going to end up with a total load of around 13, 14. That'll be fine. Happens in a lot of vintage amps, actually. So I'm going to put these in place, and then we're going to wire up the top. All right, I've got my top-level speakers wired. I have my positive going to my positive of this speaker, the negative of this going to the positive of this, and then the negative of this going back to my jack. Now, I currently have cable plugged into the jack and I've got my multimeter hooked up so after doing some calculations it should be around 12 13 ohms 13 should be around 12 13 ohm rating I hope ish okay now 12.3 12.2 
So that's uh, within reason. That's not going to hurt your amp. Running on a 16 ohm out of an amp, that should be fine. Uh, yeah, and now all that's left really is to tighten these speakers down and plug this thing in. I just can't say enough about how cool this design is. You just got your open area and your closed area, and it's very well closed. There's screws all the way around it. It's pretty cool. And there's actually caulk all around the inside of this, so they really wanted to keep that bottom compartment sealed. The handles are in the top compartment so that nothing else is breaking into the bottom compartment. So that's really, really cool. So I'm pretty stoked on this, and I can't wait to hear how it sounds. All right, everybody, I figured we should probably use a Laney amp if we're going to be pushing this Laney cab, right, with our new warehouse speakers. Now, new speakers are always going to mellow out a little bit over time, so these are probably a little more harsh right now, but even still, they're not very. They sound good. Pretty cool, so let's crank up a little bit of drive and see what it sounds like. I'm pretty happy with that guys and uh, man I just I'm so stoked to have this this cab now and I've had this headline around forever I got the head locally for a hundred bucks a, a year ago maybe and then it needs to be cleaned and then this thing I got locally for a hundred bucks and the warehouse guitar speakers were uh, around 230 altogether I think so a little over 400 bucks for a really righteous setup that could easily hang with a band live or my purposes for studio use so that's pretty cool but anyway if you guys want to do it you can do it yourself if you ever need to wire up a 4x12 or 4x10 or anything with four speakers this is the way i like to do it to get that uh ohm load and there's different ways to do it if you wanted a four ohm load you could run everything in parallel but i'm blathering on i'm just gonna play and have a good time and i hope you guys do too like share subscribe thanks for watching i'll see you next time